Hi, this is Ray Mossholder. This is a newscast from material gathered by Ozzy on Instagram for February 2nd, 2022. Start your day smarter with a dossier on the most important world news rounded off with a shot of intriguing and offbeat stories. Like the president, you deserve no less. From ESPN, the most successful NFL player in history put an end to days of speculation surrounding his future. Describing his career as a thrilling ride that required 100% commitment, 44-year-old Tom Brady explained he was not going to make that competitive commitment anymore. He's retiring. Despite being at least a decade older than many of his rivals, Brady was able to call time at the top of his game after leading the Tampa Bay Buccaneers to win the 2021 Super Bowl, as well as doing that six times before with the New England Patriots. His laundry list of NFL records may last another 44 years. From Reuters, a week after Burkina Faso's president was deposed in a military coup, another West African leader found himself under siege. By Tuesday evening, Guinea-Bissau's president, Umaro Sissoko Mbalo, was clinging to power, but many of his members of his security forces had been killed, repelling an attack that Mbalo suggested was linked to drug trafficking. The impoverished country is an important stepping stone for Latin American cocaine bound for Europe, and its military has long been suspected of involvement in the trade. Mbalo said it wasn't just a coup. It was an attempt to kill the president, the prime minister, and all the cabinet. From the New York Times, speaking for the first time, since December about the Russian-Ukraine detente, President Vladimir Putin seemingly tried to assail fears of a full-scale invasion, but he still had harsh words for the West, ignoring the fact that Moscow has amassed over 100,000 troops on Ukraine's border Putin accused the United States of, quote, pulling us into some armed conflict, close quote, while adding he's prepared to pursue further diplomacy. There were no such gray areas for White House Press Secretary Jen Psaki, who compared his comments to, quote, when the fox is screaming from the top of the hen house that he's scared of the chickens. From DW in Germany, at the Food and Drug Administration's request, the drug maker launched an application on Tuesday for a two-dose COVID-19 vaccine regimen for children aged between six months and five years. If approved, 23 million young Americans will be eligible for two, three microgram doses over 12s, get 30 micrograms, three weeks apart. Pfizer is expected to apply for approval for a third dose as trials have shown that double doses don't achieve desired antibody levels. 
the idea said Pfizer CEO Albert Berla is for parents to begin a quote vaccination series for their children while awaiting potential authorization of a third dose. From 7 News, here's some things you should know about today. Australian police announced that two human heads have been stolen from mausoleums in a Melbourne cemetery. From Times Live, a 40-year-old suspect bound for Malaysia was arrested at South Africa's O.R. Tambo International Airport after 11 rhino horns were found in his luggage. How do you hide 11 rhinoceros horns? Well, simply impossible. From the BBC, Ecuador's heaviest rains in nearly 20 years have triggered a landslide that's killed at least 22 people in Quito, the capital. 20 more people are missing. From Science News, who's afraid of the big bad governor? Changes in hunting laws in Montana Idaho and Wyoming have seen more than 500 gray wolves killed in recent months. Numbers not seen since the animals were driven to near extinction. The dramatic rise in wolf populations thanks to a highly successful reintroduction program led to ending federal protections for Canis lupus and opened the floodgates for trigger-happy legislators. One-fifth of Yellowstone's wolves, which often roam outside the park, have since been killed, which brought this response from Doug Smith, a development wildlife biologist of the National Park Service. He describes this as a, quote, huge setback for research on wolf populations. From Bloomberg, no more grander for China amid government cleanup. China just swiped left. Gay dating app Grindr has vanished from multiple app stores in the world's most populous nation amid Beijing's month-long campaign to root out controversial and illegal content during Lunar New Year celebrations and the Winter Olympics. China decriminalized homosexuality in 1997, but same-sex marriage remains illegal and life is seldom easy for the Chinese LGBTQ community. A grinder spokesman said the company removed its app from stores over a new privacy law that took effect in November. But the move comes days after China vowed to, quote, create a civilized, healthy, festive, and auspicious online atmosphere for public opinion. From the New Zealand Herald, while New Zealand has been lauded for limiting the spread of COVID-19, strict border policies meant many Kiwis have been unable to return home for years. Charlotte Bellis, a reporter who drew global attention for questioning the Taliban about their treatment of women on live TV has now been granted an emergency spot in New Zealand's government quarantine. Until the intervention, 
Bellis, who was expecting her first child, had been forced to stay in Afghanistan, where she said the Taliban offered her, quote, safe haven. She's vowed to fight on behalf of other stranded pregnant Kiwis who don't have her public profile. From NPR, Whoopi Goldberg, the color purple star, has been suspended as co-host of The View for two weeks after saying that the Holocaust was not about race during a discussion on Monday by a Tennessee school board Benning Moss, a graphic novel about Nazi death camps. Her comments caused outrage in the Jewish community, with Rabbi Abraham Cooper of the Simon Weisenthal Center attributing them to a, quote, new definition of racism that defines racism exclusively as the targeting of people of color. And obviously, history teaches us otherwise. Goldberg, who is black, has apologized and vowed to learn more about racism. From the BBC, British police confirmed 20-year-old Mason Greenwood is under further arrest on suspicion of sexual assault and making death threats and will remain in custody until Wednesday. He was first arrested Sunday after police, quote, became aware of online social media images and videos posted by a woman reporting incidents of physical violence. Greenwood won't play for the Red Devils until further notice, and sponsors EA Sports, Nike, and Cadbury have distanced themselves from him. The case increases pressure on English soccer to address violence against women. Man City Benjamin Mendy and former Man U player Ryan Giggs are both awaiting trial on similar charges. What else are you curious about? You can share your questions or your thoughts with the OZ community by simply writing to, emailing to OZ community at OZ.com. OZ is O-Z-Y. OZ community at OZ.com. OZ community at OZ.com. OZ is a diverse, global, and forward-looking media and entertainment company focused on the new and the next. OZ creates space for fresh perspectives and offers new takes on everything from news and culture to technology, business, learning, and entertainment. And now it's time for It Happened in America. Question, on what day did the Revolutionary War end? Well, this may help. Before the Redcoats finally evacuated New York City, they greased their flagpole. One Union soldier after another slid off the pole, trying to lower the Union Jack. Finally, a resourceful sailor managed to scale the slippery flagpole, and only then did George Washington feel that the Revolutionary War was over. And finally, from Google, 
in the entire state of Ohio in 1895, there were only two cars on the road. And the drivers of these two cars crashed into each other. <laughs>